let's all breathe in. And if you would put your feet flat on the ground and sense your connection to the ground. And as you breathe, see roots growing out of the bottom of your feet, going down into Mother Gaia. So first let's breathe in and then out through the mouth. Feel the roots digging into the earth, the moist, warm earth. And breathe in again. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Feel that energy, the surge of energy from mother love coming up through your body, relaxing your shoulders, loosening your neck and going through your throat chakra. Now, once again, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and feel the energy shoot up to your star cluster, your home in the heavens and feel this connection like this tube of energy coming up up your spine, up to the heavens, but also down equally down into the earth, into the love, into the mother. Now, while you're in this beautiful space, let's pretend that we're all holding hands and we're holding hands with the four of us with this energy that we've created, almost as a column of light. Now picture another light burst coming out of your heart chakra, the front and the back of your heart chakra. Let it activate and pulse and feel it go through and around through your hands in your arms. Feel your energy circle in the front inside the space and outside the space, your front and back chakra. Know that this is really who you are, this pulse of energy, ever changing, ever growing, ever expanding. And you are so loved and so have so much potential to hold and share love. You cannot imagine. <sighs> Breathe in this beautiful heart energy so that you can activate it at any time. Anytime you're worried or have any, any problems, breathe in and remember this beautiful heart energy that is inside, outside, and on your backside as well. Breathe in and breathe out. See this picture in your mind's eye. Hold it and use it whenever you need it. And now, ground it in with this beautiful sound. Welcome. Welcome, Henry. So 
So now I'm going to turn this over to Trina. Trina, is there anything you want to say before I put the screen share on? Um, I think, do you want to just run the slides from there? Yes. OK, that's awesome. Um, you know, when Kathy and I were talking about what we were going to do, what we wanted to talk about, and looking at the fact that conscious living is such um, an important piece of why we're here, it extends to our businesses as well. And so we wanted to have a little discussion and a little presentation about what does it mean to be a conscious business, um, as well as live consciously at the same time. And how could we impact the world if we did this? So kind of how that came about. Okay. Just see your screen sharing. There you go. You see? Everybody okay? Uh, yeah. Whoops. Not, <laughs> Not anymore. Hmm. What happened? There we go. <laughs> Okay, so our talk is going to be on how to be a conscious heart-based business. And it's actually, since we're assuming you're a leader in business, it's also about having a conscious life. So, so they're intertwined quite a bit. So... So the first thing we want to talk about is a conscious company and you know being an entrepreneur for me I've been an entrepreneur since I was 18 years old so that's been gosh 42 years 42 years 43 years I don't know we started our first business right out of high school and I've never really held a J-O-B, unless I've decided that I wanted some kind of experience and, and that. Um, and so one of the really great things about being an entrepreneur is that you can decide how your company runs. You can decide how you want it to look in the world and the way it presents itself. It's a little bit tougher if you're working for somebody else. Um, but you can still create that influence inside a company if you can bring forward some really great ideas. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is that as we grow our businesses, when we start our businesses and as we grow and develop them, we usually develop patterns, different strategies, belief systems, um, our own ideas and philosophies about how we want to run our business, how we want to work it. And a lot of those come through our experiences, especially as an entrepreneur. You'll have an experience and say, yeah, this works or that doesn't work, and you kind of tailor it to your own way. The thing is that when we repeat something enough, and especially if it's something traumatic and it runs through our head over and over and over again, these kind of experiences, they, they like settle into our subconscious mind and the unconscious. And the way I, I define subconscious and unconscious, it has to do with subconscious is when something happens and you believe it's true when you take it in um, and it becomes a truth for you. Unconscious is something that you don't really quite have a handle on, you can't really explain. And a lot of times you take it in and you operate from a level that you don't even exactly know why you're doing what you're doing. But either way, the experiences settle into us and then we use them automatically when we need them. They become reactions for us and we create habits, different patterns, and sometimes we don't even know why we do what we do. Um, however, businesses are always changing. And in particular, our lives and our businesses begin to grow. We develop. Some of what we do is automatic. Some of it is not. But 
most of what we do is based on old patterns and belief systems. And a lot of them are ones that don't work. I don't know how many times you may have heard somebody say, oh, well, I tried that. It didn't work. It'll never, ha it'll never work again. Instead of taking that really curious step of saying, hmm, why didn't it work? Maybe it's because it wasn't the right time. Maybe it's because I wasn't clear enough with my information. Maybe it's because, you know, and, and there could be a whole slew of reasons. But most people just take things at face value and say, well, that didn't work, and they toss it out the door. And when the opportunity shows itself again, they may have an automatic reaction of, well, that's not going to work. And I battle that a lot in different companies when I consult with them or, um, you know, when you bring in ideas and even sometimes in my own with team members. That's not going to work. We tried that. Maybe it'll work now. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. So I wanted to define conscious living a bit. And this is when conscious living comes into play. In order to have a conscious business, you need to understand how to live consciously. So the definition of consciousness that we have here on the screen is perceiving, apprehending, or noticing with a degree of controlled thought or observation, done or acting with critical awareness. So some syn synonyms are alive, aware, cognizant, mindful. So in other words, you're aware of something and you're making your choices based on observing and then using cont controlled thought to actually move into a choice that you're making. And then the definition of living is having life, being active, functioning, exhibiting life for the motion of. So there's an activity that goes on there. And when we take these two and we put them together, it really is observing, being aware, controlling our thoughts and our choices with critical awareness as we live life, as we take action. It's not a reaction, it's a controlled functioning action. And in this case, we want it to come from the heart. We don't want the head in the way, we want the heart to be what's driving us. So there's gotta be some feeling behind it as well. Okay. So what we're talking about now is a conscious company which comes from being aware and making other choices rather than having your reactionary gut response or your buttons pushed, that kind of response. And um, Conscious Company, which is a magazine that we refer to several times in this presentation, and there are references at the end of this. This is a quote from Conscious Company. They call it the millennial mindset. It'll fundamentally shift capitalism. People are saying enough. We want something more in life and business and companies and work in the world. We want meaning, purpose, joy. Of course, money matters, but money isn't everything. We know that there can be more. And this is from the, the magazine's uh, issue, October, September, October, 2017. And this magazine is, is published in Boulder. So um, when you think about what a conscious company is, it's a conscious, it's, it's a choice of the owner or the top management to take all stakeholders into account in its operations, decisions, and strategies. And it really places the, the whole theme of the business has a higher purpose beyond profit. So profit is one of the things, but passion and purpose is, is paramount. It's mission and purpose driven, as I said, they consider, measure, and value the people, communities, and environment that their operations impact. And when you run a company from this sort of perspective, you have a whole different energy um, structure to pull from. You're energizing everyone within the corporation, 
but the actual mission all of a sudden has its own energy and is activated. So it can manifest really quickly. Uh, another part of the definition is also from the magazine, actively creates a positive impact on the world around them as, in as many ways as possible. They help rather than hurt the environment, leaves people fulfilled and creates a world where justice, freedom and equality thrive, not in spite of the companies in our midst, but because of them. So when you think of what we're seeing right now in our society, we desperately need conscious companies. I mean, we're, we're seeing the two sides of the teeter-totter or, or the, however you want to call the balance, and we're way out of balance where, where the large corporations are totally insensitive to Mother Earth, um, the resources, people, every, everything has gotten down to a commodity and it's all replaceable. And that's not a conscious company. That is the old paradigm, which is going out. It, it can't survive in this new energy because it doesn't take into context of the opportunity to learn from each other, where we see each other as one, where everything's a mirror and an opportunity to learn and grow. Because the old model is the owner or the top of the, the pyramid knows everything and the everyone else is expendable and this new paradigm is more team oriented and every single component helps build the all it's it's almost out of alignment without the conscious team one of the things i don't know how many of you work with millennials or have a lot of contact with them or even some of the the younger people that are coming up but they seem to have like the definition here was that it's a millennial mindset and millennials always seem to have some type of a mission behind what they're doing the profit is important because it's the lifeblood of the company and keeps it moving but when they think of something it's like okay so how are we going to impact the world with this and when we impact the world, are we gonna leave it a better place? Or um, what can we contribute to? Or can we create a foundation? Or is there um, a way that we can reuse or recycle? Um, sustainability is huge. And what I noticed, especially working on the GMO labeling um, initiative a couple years ago, was that there were a lot of these organic um, food companies coming forward. They were growing in size it was amazing how fast they were growing and then these other big corporations looking at the profit and seeing that there's this trend that's changing started gobbling up these other companies now whether it's a control thing whether it's they want that part of the niche but you know that the mindset and the principles of this big corporation are not exactly the same as the smaller one that they're gobbling up it can get diluted um, change and you need to watch for some of that in some of the companies that you do business with so there are so many small smaller entrepreneurial based businesses that are offering you know just absolutely beautiful products and then watch if they're bought out and see if the parent company is actually changing the way that they're doing business um, those are the ones that you want to really follow or are they just really trying to buy up a market share and you don't see the change? One of them was um, General Mills was buying up some of the companies. And after a while, they even actually came out and said, you know, Cheerios is organic and blah, blah, blah. And then they had to backpedal because, <laughs> because they weren't. Um, but they bought up a lot of the organic companies. And so there's a lot of this shift that's occurring while these big corporations begin to try and find their place in this whole new conscious company mindset right the the other thing i wanted to add to that is there about i think 10 or 12 years ago there was a new process for marketing that was um they that was uh founded by a a book that was called cultural creatives 
and cultural creatives was a new type of marketing mentality where you were um, defining people by their values rather than by their demographics. So it wasn't whether they went to college, what kind of car they drove, whether they had 2.2 children. It was whether or not they were in the Sierra Club and whether they did spiritual travel and whether they, um, whether they gave to certain um, charities. So it was all based on interests, which is what Facebook is doing as well. So what happened is, is all of a sudden you're getting to see and really connect to people at a whole different level than just the idea that everyone that drives a Volvo feels this way. You know, it, it's not by consumer um, action or everyone drives a Prius thinks this way. It's much deeper at a heart level by knowing what their interests are. And that's been a trend, and I welcome that trend a lot, personally, because I think that that shows the fact that um, people are connecting on that level gives you a chance to really create a much better future for all of us. Then that made me think of another magazine too. It's called Yes, and Yes highlights um, solutions that different communities or individuals are coming up with to help solve problems and they're so inventive one of them that I absolutely loved um, a guy who lived in an urban environment wanted a garden didn't have a place for it but he had an old pickup truck and he threw a bunch of dirt in the back started growing garden in the back of his pickup truck <laughs> well the kids kids in the neighborhood had never seen a garden before never saw plants grow and they were just absolutely mesmerized by this as they grew when they were able to pick the stuff. He turned that into um, this whole program where they're teaching kids and they take these pickups now to, to different, you know, city schools or around the neighborhoods. And wow. he's created a whole training program on gardening using the back of pickup trucks. So these kind of companies that come up with these amazing ideas and they look at how to serve the good, the money comes after they begin to provide something that people are really yearning for. And so when they connect with the heart like that um, and they're, they're smart enough to be consciously aware of what's going on, they reach out and things just begin to snowball. So this magazine called Yes is really phenomenal and it just highlights a lot of these great businesses that are out there now. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So Trina, this one to you. What did Henry say? Right livelihood from the Buddhist eightfold path. Oh. Inner and in, inner and outer something. That's pretty cool. So when we talk about creating a conscious way of living or a conscious company there's some little steps that kind of are involved in creating it um, one of these is taking time for yourself to think about and choose the life you want so many times even in businesses people don't take the time to actually think about what it is that they want or to dream to become the dreamer and going back to Michael Gerber and his e-myth um, books he always talked about the fact that there were three, three types of people involved in a company. One was the operator, the person actually doing the hands-on work. One was the administrator or management. And then the other one was the dreamer, the visioning, the, the one who comes up with all the concepts and the ideas. And the one thing he really wanted to point out to people was that you can hire the operational people and train them. You can hire the administrative people and train them, but you cannot hire the visionary. And so if you have your own business, it's your job to be the visionary and to communicate yourself and to think and reflect and choose the things that you want. Now, another point here is that understanding and changing any negative thought patterns and behaviors you have, you really need to take a look at any time that negative pops up. 
and say, why is that there? And who's talking? And, you know, so many businesses <coughs> and people don't really look at that. Their patterns is to go to the negative. And as soon as you start shifting those, things begin to shift in your life. Things begin to shift in your business. Becoming aware of your thoughts and words and actions. Choosing them consciously and carefully and living with self-awareness. Being aware of how you react to things. Being aware of the way you respond to people. Being aware of everything that you're doing and focus in on the fact that you choose. And you can either choose consciously or you can just choose unconsciously. But you're not going to make a change if you're unconscious. So this is all about really watching yourself, watching your behavior, and watching your business and your business behavior. Living with the awareness of your relationships with everyone and everything around you. Understanding that your actions have consequences. And again, choosing those actions carefully. Everything we do, we're in relationship. And so no matter what we do, and that's, that's the biggest thing right now, even on the quantum level in the quantum field, they're showing, they're, they're finding out that we are connected energetically to everything and everything we do impacts everything. So we need to keep that foremost in our mind that what we choose to do um, impacts everything around us more so than what we would ever know. And so summarizing what, this, what conscious living is about or what conscious business is about is that conscious living is functioning, perceiving and noticing with a degree of controlled thought and acting with critical awareness. It's far from living on the automatic. It means that we are tuned to respond that we're tuned to make choices. And that piece of it is critical. It's really about you taking control of your life, taking control of your business, not pointing fingers, not blaming, but owning and taking responsibility. And an elder I work with taught me that responsibility means responding with ability. You cannot take responsibility if you're not willing to respond with ability. And it may mean you don't know exactly what to do, but it means you're smart enough to go out and find the resources or the people to help you. So um, that much awareness all the time is what we need both in our lives and in our businesses. And so for business, Kathy's gonna take over. Okay, so the question that we wanna really e explore is how do we learn to live and create a conscious heart-based business? So obviously part of it's an inner job and part of it's an outer job. So we're gonna go, we're gonna explore that a little bit right now. So the first concept we'd like to talk about is of course, something to do with the heart. Because of course, that's the bigger brain <laughs> in this whole <laughs> formula, really. I mean, we think this is the bigger receiver, but it really isn't. The heart is the bigger receiver. So first what we want to do, we want to move from the heart, not from the head. And what that means, honestly, is if you really work from kindness and self-love, which reflects out to everyone, the, the inner work can't be, we can't, we can't talk about the inner work enough. By you working on yourself and creating a love affair with yourself, you are gonna create a love affair with everyone around you. And it sort of sounds selfish, but it isn't. It, it, it can't be more important to this whole aspect. It's simple, but it takes repetition and practice, just like learning all the other beliefs and patterns we have acquired in our lives. One of um, my coaches actually taught us to look, do mirror work. 
and say, I love you for five minutes every morning in the mirror. And that practice, um, I, I didn't have any problem with it because I had done Louise Hay had introduced me to that a long time ago. But a lot of the people in my group, um, they, they couldn't do it. They actually, they got a lot of the guys, they couldn't look in the mirror and tell themselves they loved themselves. So, so, you know, if you start the day and then you, the next part of that is how do I serve, right? I mean, so once it, the love's overflowing, how do I give it away? How do I share it? And um, that, that's not a very common thing to do in business. Business traditionally is ego-based, not heart-based. So, and then these are some of the words that reflect a state of energy and power. And you need all of these in your life and your business. And they come from the heart. It's creativity, inspiration, motivation. You become energized like a, um, it's, it's almost like grace works through you, the energy that comes through. You, synchronicities show up. And with that impact, so this is, when we talk about the woman's way and we talk about it being impact with love, that's the kind of impact we're talking about, not the impact of I surrender, you conquered me, <laughs> which is the old, you know, 3D. We're talking about a 5D, fifth dimensional um, uh, concepts of, of having conscious choices to be kind and loving and sharing in a business sense where it creates a whole different kind of team. So Trina, this one for you. So the concept too is everything is energy. And there's a picture of Einstein here and he says, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality it can be no other way this is not philosophy this is physics and that's exactly what we were playing with when we were playing in the void and playing with the field that was playing with the frequencies um, I don't know if if you if all of you know about um, Nassim Haramein who has done this movie called The Connected Universe. Um, first time I ever saw him, he was in the Thrive movie that Foster Gamble put out. But um, Nassim is a physicist. He's a self-made physicist, actually. Ended up um, basically not going to school because he didn't want to think in the box. And what he is looking for in the work that he is doing is this connectivity that the connecting of the science and spirituality, the actual um, showing that as we, because the definition that, that's there of consciousness is that there's a feedback loop. It's when something happens and it feeds back and gives itself information. So when you work on the scope that everything's energy, and that went clear back to the beginning of when we were in science classes that they were vibrating, everything was made out of vibrating atoms. But what they're asking now is 99.999% of it is space. Only 0 0.00001 is the actual particulates of matter. So the question is, if everything is energy, and there's frequency and there's vibration and it's affecting these little particles of matter, why are we focusing on the particles of matter and not focusing on the space? And what's in the space? And how much energy and power is in the space? And what potentiality is in the space? Because the matter is affected by it. And so once we get the concept that everything is energy, and thoughts are energy, what we think is as powerful as what we do. And our thoughts, just because we can't necessarily see them, though I have friends who say they can see thoughts, um, those thoughts impact. 
So Kathy, change that slide to the next one. So how do we perceive the energy that's there? And it's pretty simple. Is it positive or is it negative? When you think of positive, all those words that Kathy gave us before about motivation and creativity kind of makes you feel like you're going, ah, with your arms up and everything is big and expanded. Well, when it's negative, when you think of being depressed or you think about sadness or you think about um, getting stuck, you watch most people and they kind of go down into their little shell and they become very contracted. When I talk about state changes in one of the presentations I give and the definition of a state change, um, a lot of times they use the um, example of water. That a state change, when you add more energy to it, like you would with water, water expands and becomes a gas. When you take the energy away from it, it contracts and becomes hard and solid. Well, that works on all levels. It's not just water. It's a state change that when we add energy to something, when we expand it up and big, more comes into us. What we put out comes back. When we're negative and we contract and we pull into the little shell, Nothing enters because we're just a solid little rock that, that, you know, is just not absorbing anything. So the question is, is it positive or negative? And when you feel that positivity, your heart expands. When you feel negativity, you can feel your gut starting to clench. That's one of the best ways to tell if something's going on. Close your eyes. Breathe into it. Is my heart expanding? Or am I feeling something in my gut? And if something's in my gut, is it because I, it's fear? Is it because I've had a bad experience in the past? Or is it really something that's so negative I probably shouldn't get involved in it? So you've got to ask the questions when you start feeling that negativity. And when it is negative, it's like, how do I turn this around? What are the opportunities? What are the choices I can make? I can walk away. I can make a change. There's so many ways to look at it. But when the positive starts rolling and you're responding to it, it just keeps feeding. And that's what's so amazing about energy. So where your attention goes, the energy flows. And that's what's so important. So you want to be able to discern whether you're working in positive or in the negative and simply there's no in between. When you finally get that, that there's no in between and there's no excuses for it, you just choose one or the other. And it, it something that could be positive for you might be negative for somebody else. Right. That's okay because we're all different. But at the same time, if it's positive for you, you probably want to follow it. And if it's negative for you, you probably want to explore it and see what you want to do with that. Great. And okay, and now I think we go on to number three. The concept, the third concept is nature of life is change. And boy, can we tell that um, we're in constant change. Nature is in motion. It is movement and cycles. We can resist it or flow with it. Nothing is static. And what I'd like to um, have you look at here is that some people hold on to the old ways or, or if we use that example um, that Trina used earlier, that we, have, we tried that before, it didn't work. You know, they, they're rigid in their thinking. You lose the chance to ride a wave. Because if we really get to a more conscious um, look at reality, we see that we're in school. <laughs> and uh, Earth is a school. And this Earth school allows you to learn. And the cycle of life and the change of it could be you learn on the way up, and then you learn on the way down. And if you look at the gift of it on the way down, then you get to go back up. If you resist it, you get to stay at the bottom of the wave. So, and, and as new energy is coming into our solar system, 
this is going to be more and more and more important because uh, the polarity of 3D is a wave. It's also a wave, right? So we want to work on that. And the secret to change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new, the Socrates. So the, these profound truths haven't changed, but man's consciousness of them have. And what we're suggesting is that there's these tremendous tools. And um, what Trina had talked about before about the, the energy and feeling if it's negative or positive, the fact that you're aware of your feelings is a huge, huge tool. And so many people have um, shut down their feelings and they aren't using that barometer as a way as a guidance system so part of this consciousness awakening is to reawaken your emotions and use them as an asset to guide you so and when you're focusing all your energy on fighting that's that's the wrong that's when your stomach and your gut feels tight that's not you no know, fighting Fighting for good is fighting. <laughs> it's the, 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 this new creation, this new energy that we're coming into, it can be as easy as a thought of delight and something can manifest. That's where the synchronicities are coming from. So that's why we want to encourage you to be aware of what does delight you, what brings you joy, and how you can build on the new. So Trina, absolutely. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this, about how people and business are similar. And so a person basically has four, you know, four parts to them. Physical, which is their body. Emotional, which is the feelings. The mental, which is thinking. And the spiritual, the passion, the intuition, God, that piece. Well, businesses are basically made a, the same way. There's the physical piece of the business, which is the operations, the assets, the tangibles, um, all the physicalities of business. Then you move into the emotion and you start talking about the culture and the communication of what's there. It really is where you touch into your people and there's caring and, and how do you build that and and then the mental piece of it is the planning, the procedures, those kinds of things that you go through in a business. And then there's the spiritual piece, which again is the passion, the mission, the dreams, the vision. So the one that I always feel is overlooked a little bit, we hear a lot about mind, body, spirit. And they kind of lose that emotional piece in there where the emotions are actually the piece that kind of connect everything together and tell us so much about what's going on. And it's the same thing in business. Now we're seeing this big shift to where developing a culture or really um, examining the culture of a business is important. The communication is important. Um, the connectivity between the people is important getting feedback from your employees, um, getting feedback from your customers. It used to be that you, you would kind of do surveys and see what people think, but now there's really this heart-based connection that's there. And I think a lot of that is because of the time that we're in right now and the people that are being born in, these new, these new younger generations, um, reminds me a lot of what was there in the end of the 60s and early 70s when there was the whole movement of much more heart connection. But that kind of broke the surface. And now it's coming back in with a, with a deeper wisdom and a deeper knowing. And people are recognizing culture, um, this connectivity around the globe. Things are global. And it used to be that a CEO of a company could kind of hide behind the company. And Kathy talks about this a lot. Now, because of Facebook and some of these others, um, the person who's running the business 
you can see if they're authentic or not. Authenticity is something that's huge. And not only is it authentic in a person, but it's, your business has to be authentic as well. People are reading this now. And where they didn't talk about it before, they talk about it and they're making choices based on how they feel and, and the connection, the heartfelt connections that they're making. So it's the same between the two. And I don't know, if, Kathy, if you have more to say on that for the marketing piece of it when it comes to a business. Well, well, it's obvious that the most businesses now have multi diff, multi generations in their workforce, and so it's not. Um, it's a very different. If you're in a corporation or a, a business that has a lot of employees, they've got they've got a range of communication styles that have to be um, tailored to people that are not World War II, but you know, the baby boomers onto the millennials. And how do you reach that large of a uh, different generation gap? You do it through culture and through the heart and through mission. You can't do it just by, by because everyone's experience in each one of these generations, their values and a lot of their um, training is totally different. And uh, I do think the millennials are bringing a new concept where they want things to have meaning so much more than what um, we were taught. I'm, I'm a more of a baby boomer at the end of the baby boomer side, but we were taught pretty much um, the hierarchy was okay. <laughs> you just wanted to be on the top. <laughs> But uh, this, this, this new uh, opportunity is to make a team with all these different perspectives, but can uh, connect them with the mission. So there's not that much a difference between the actual person and the businesses. Exactly. There's the same qualities that are there. And where so much of the focus used to be on how you thought or how your planning went and all this other kind of stuff. Now it's more about flow and culture and am I taking care of everything? Am I taking care of everyone? Right. Um, we're seeing that a lot and we're turning away. Many people are having a difficult time with the companies, with businesses that are not addressing the issues. There's still some that have some strongholds, um, but there's a lot of people that are speaking out about those that are saying this isn't okay anymore right. and where it used to be considered soft to feel things it used to be considered weak if you had heart now they're finding that the strength is in the heart and You're really weak if you're not working with that with the with the mind and with the thinking so yes there's a strength in it now. It's well, when, when you're talking about the authenticness, I mean, I think that when you see the past and the, and, and I keep um, dissing on the corporate mentality, but when you see a hierarchy and the, and the leader has to wear a costume and they can't really get out of their costume, they have to show up as that. And then, then they go on Facebook or LinkedIn and you see them with their kids over the weekend, and they're having it. There, there's a dichotomy of, of being that, that, not realistic person, and a real person. So you know, and and this is down to there is no room for that that costume anymore, in any way. There's no room in that for that in conversation in business practices, in, in any, um, in product and services, it, it's all it has to be um, totally authentic. And, um, and, and if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. But the team effort creates so much more energy and possibility for success than the leader taking the team to battle which is that it's almost a uh, war model. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and that's got, that hopefully will be gone soon. My daughter-in-law works in upper management in the Molson Coors Corp Corporation, and we were talking about the changes in businesses and things, and she said one of the big trends right now in corporate is to hire contract entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, to come in and talk to them because they're seeing this need for more of an entrepreneurial mindset, which the entrepreneurial mindset is much more about creating and culture, heart-based passion, that kind of a thing, because they're seeing the rise, especially when you think about Molson Coors in the beer industry, how many of these you know, small craft beers are, are out there. Um, and people are just thriving because there's, you know, they, they go to them because there's this choice and there's a creativity around it. And the bigger corporations are seeing now that this is something that's needed and they can't figure out how to think. They can't figure it out how an entrepreneur thinks and how they behave and, and it's because they have that passion drive and they come from the heart as much as from the head. It isn't just about business planning. I think it's also that they can quickly change course. Yes. I think that when you're, when you're in a small team and everyone wants to go towards the goal and they're having fun with it, they can change course on a dime. They could go in in the morning and go, oh, we're going to do this trade show next weekend. And everyone just do everything that we need to do. And they're in the trade show. Whereas if you go into one of these large corporations, sorry, it wasn't in our budget. Don't have the staffing. They just can't move. They can't, they can't, they can't actually initiate new things very quickly. It's a cumbersome setup. Yeah. And it feels totally stuck. Yeah really feel stuck so this other concept about choosing your state changes it's really a change of perspective it's moving from a victim mode to a creator mode it's moving from a reactive mode into an action mode and each one of those takes choice takes conscious choice and you have to be aware again you have to be completely self-aware both in yourself and in your business, when you're acting like a victim and you're reacting to things versus saying, oh man, that happened, now I gotta figure out how to take care of it. And then you create, um, one of the best lessons I ever learned was to accept the unacceptable and move on. Because as long as you're still focusing on what happened, instead of the creating an action mode, you're living in the past. And as long as you keep looking at the past, you're never going to make changes. So it's okay to say, all right, this happened, these are the impacts that it had, and then you shift out of it and say, where am I going next? I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna glean the lessons out of whatever's going on there, I'm going to take full responsibility for it and I'm going to respond with ability and I'm going to move myself to wherever I need to go. And the sooner you lose that old past thinking mentality, the quicker you are to creating something so much bigger. And that change of perspective is key. It's just as just like that positive and negative as soon as you realize that you're in the negative, in most cases, if you're in the negative, you're in the past. So the positive, in most cases, you're looking in the present moment and the possibilities of the future. And the present moment actually is the only place you can make your changes. So you don't want to be out in the future too much, um, but you want to be there enough to know the choices that you're making and the only reason you go in the past is to glean the lessons from it you cannot stay there or you'll never create a new future I think our biggest um, opportunity for growth as a society as humankind 
is this victim to creator model mm -hmm. where um where right now there's so many people still stuck in the victim but if they knew what divine beings they were and what their capacity was to create heaven on earth or whatever they desired just what a magnificent world we would live in so I, i'm really looking forward to that and i see that coming that's my my view of it and it's really just it really is just we're creating every second it's like but do we want to create ourselves as a victim or do we want to create ourselves as a creator that makes more cool stuff or does right. more cool things right so right we can well, create if, whichever if you stay in that frequency you just bring more to you it's it's almost this joke when you think about it it's like you you know uh, the the whole idea of processing and processing your stuff the more you process you bring it you keep bringing it to you that's the wrong frequency the idea is we're in polarity you can flip it to the other that's one of the laws of nature in 3d is polarity so you're in the negative okay what's the flip of it um and and you could go to the middle ground where it's even nothing you know that's that that uh peaceful calm or you could flip to the joy from the pain so that that's our choice so so this next slide talks about uh, having a different view and incorporating mindfulness in your life and mindfulness is present moment awareness and i was lucky enough to take a i think it was a 10 week course with this incredible teacher named eric knaus and he now is living in south america um, and his course is now only available in spanish but i got to take it when he lived here in Boulder. And his whole mindfulness course was based on um, a breathing technique, um, getting into acceptance, awareness, and the present moment. And um, I, I'm sure I could still find him if you wanted to connect with him and find out more about the course. It was really good. But the skill of it is, again, it's, when something happens rather than us you know it may push a button so let's say my sister calls me and i i she pushes my buttons because she knows exactly where they are <laughs> and um i and rather than me reacting right away i can take a breath be aware accept that i experienced that but not react and then look at what the lesson is. You can say, oh, there it is again. There it is again until it goes away. Because it, without energy, it won't stay. So that's a, another part of what we're going to be doing in this new economy, in this new way of living, is if everyone's working from a mindfulness where they do hokoponopono to clear, any obstacles or they do the breathing techniques centering and breathing and really look at what's the gift in this if if the universe and the whole environment you're in is a school and it's for your highest good because consciousness is expanding itself and experiencing itself through you then then what's the gift in any of this that's what that's part of the mindfulness part because when you accept and acknowledge the gift you get more <laughs> it's it's like a law so yay <laughs> <laughs> yay 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 okay so and um so then this is five ways to flow with the go of business so this is a way to use management techniques and mindfulness so keep your value proposition inside at all times. Again, what you focus on expands. Focus on your customers, not on your competition. The experiences you create between your brand and your customer generates business. I always found that in my experience, I had a retail store for 16 years. There was a million dollar store. And I would actually ask customers if they had a problem 
because it was much better for me to be able to find out about it and see if I could fix it than lose them or, or not even be aware because there was no intention to not have them have the best experience possible. We were, were all working hard to have that happen. So, you know, a lot of the times if you focus on your customers, that's, that's the best policy, I think, anyway. Think big, don't stagnate. So, you and your business are a part of a bigger picture, believe. What happens in a lot of cases in businesses is they don't realize, again, the wave of energy that this reality is, play, is created in. And you can't stay at the top. You have to ride it. Now, you can come right back up, but you can't stay. Anything that stays the same dies. If you don't, if you don't, if, if you look at plants, you can't, they won't stay the same. They grow or they die. You, you know, it's, that's life. So if you stagnate, that's your choice. That's usually a choice that made out of fear. So that's not mindful. Um, keep pushing the boundaries. Well, the only way you really get delighted about your accomplishments is that you went out of your comfort zone. Now it's scary at first. So if you um, if you do have fear, you want to um, get some support. You may need accountability partners to get support, a coach to get you out of your comfort zone. Because right a, right past that thing you fear is a miracle. <laughs> It is maybe the thing you came here to do. So, you know, by, by taking that step off the dock, <laughs> is a, it's a big deal. And then challenges are disguised as opportunities, investigate. And Trina already said something similar to this before. When you see a challenge, again, what is the opportunity? Challenges are, part of the earth experience so we'll grow and it's almost to see how creative you can be there there may be a rock in the middle of the road and you can come go around it that way around it that way go in between it you've got all sorts of choices and being being aware and spontaneous and conscious of your choices changes the whole thing it, it's and and most of the time you'll hear people say, I was frightened to do that. It was a challenge, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. You'll hear a lot of people say that with hindsight, that the challenges, a, a, a lawsuit, a divorce, a car accident, um, you know, people who have near death experiences and they touch God and come back. I mean, these were disguised as opportunities, but you might not realize the opportunities until afterwards because it opens you up to a new possibility. One of the things, too, I use a lot is um, dream time. Uh -huh. And, you know, I always figured, okay, so we spend a third of our life sleeping. And the dreams are this connection to the subconscious. Um, and it will they work on our issues and our problems. So I learned a long time ago to use that, take advantage of the dream time. And just as you're going to sleep at night, if you have an issue or problem or you need an answer to something or a new idea or whatever, right as you're falling asleep in that little space when you're really relaxing, you ask the question and you ask to remember it tomorrow, whatever comes through. And, and um, sometimes the dreams will give you great examples. Sometimes the next day you'll wake up with a solution to a problem. I do that a lot if I get stuck on something and I can't figure it out. I'll just say, okay, I need help. Um, I've got to solve this. So bring me the solution. And I wake up in the morning and all of a sudden I have a new idea or a different way to look at it or, or whatever. Um, it's amazing how powerful the dream state is and using that as a tool for expanding, um, especially 
when there are challenges and I really don't know how to handle something. I, I would also add the shower. <laughs> the shower, <laughs> yeah. You can ask when you go to sleep and then somehow water. Um, I, and mm -hmm. a lot of men say that too, that they'll somehow the first time they go to the bathroom in the morning, they get something and it, it is all water. And, and you'll, get, you'll get this very precise um, information that you could never have thought on, of on your own, especially not under pressure. So the other thing that I do um, and uh, I recommend doing is uh, kinesiology. So the, the, your body knows so much more than your mind does. So a lot of times if you have a question, some people use a pendulum, I use kinesiology and- it, I use a pendulum. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but that can also be, especially if it's a yes, no, or if you're, let's say you're um, trying to price something and you're not sure what price you should say, you can test on each price point to, to uh, figure out the right price. And um, it, it really lets you use more of your senses rather than just this noggin thing. <laughs> So, so next what we're going to do is talk about conscious living and some simple tips. And, uh, and Trina's, okay? Yeah. Okay. So um, these kind of apply to business too. So first one is get to know yourself. And this is reflection. This kind of came up um, in a conversation we were having today even. Um, someone said to me, you do a lot of reflecting. And I was like, I do. Because the more you examine your thoughts and your actions and your habits and your behaviors and you work to eliminate those that are negative and don't serve you, then the better self you become. So getting to know yourself is critical in order to become conscious um, and be able to take control and responsibility for the things that you do. Become the observer. Again, this is kind of reflecting. Look at yourself in your life from the perspective of, of, a perspective of a stranger looking at you. Do you like what you see? If not, change it. And I learned a long time ago about uh, a trick about being the observer. Because a lot of times we get emotionally caught up in things. And what, what I learned from a teacher was when you go to a movie, and you just go to the movie and you just dive into the whole plot and you're watching it, you get caught up in the emotion of it and you'll find yourself laughing and crying and being drawn to the characters and things like that. And you get so emotionally involved. But if you went in as a movie critic and you went in and you were simply watching the acting, you were looking at the plot, the screenplay, maybe the, the play of the music on what the scenes were, things like that. You, didn't, you don't get caught up in the same emotions. So some of the best things you can do as an observer is to step back and pretend you're someone else and look at the whole thing. That's why coaches and things work so well because it's somebody that's outside looking at you saying, well, this isn't really making sense or why are you doing this? <laughs> um, and because sometimes you're just too close and too emotionally attached. So if you can learn to become the observer, especially when you're struggling and step back and imagine yourself as a third person looking at you, a lot of times you'll get some amazing insights. So becoming an observer is a great way of becoming conscious about what you're doing. Another thing is about changing your perspective and then doing it. So whether it's a person, a tree, an animal, Look at life from the other perspective and act based on that perspective. Um, do no harm. So it's kind of like do unto others as they would, you would have them do unto you. When, when you're doing things, step into their shoes. Look at a situation from all different perspectives, especially if you're in a conversation, like a heated conversation, or where there's two conflicting points of view. Um, or several, even several, and step back and look at them. And now, let me see if I can get in touch with what they're feeling or what they're thinking. 
and see if I can really connect in where they are. Because especially if you are trying to find a common ground, if you can understand where they are, then you can drive the conversation, you can drive the discussion, and you can drive the solution if you get in touch and you lose your attachment to your position and learn their position you'll find a common ground and it's and it works every time it works it's amazing so um, another tip is be grateful appreciation of even the smallest things helps you open your heart and grow the good in your life um, my elders always said to me um, first thing in the day, may I see a thousand beautiful things and and touch a hundred lives or see a hundred beautiful lives. It's like so much gratefulness, so much appreciation. And when you think of the word appreciation as like appreciating money, like money grows when it appreciates in the bank, when you earn interest, when you think of appreciation that way, that when you say I appreciate it, you're really wanting it to grow bigger then you tell somebody, I really appreciate the work you do. You're really saying, I would love to see your work grow bigger. So using that instead of thank you, I love using appreciation more, or I'm so grateful. And be forgiving. Um, letting go of the past. This is forgiving and letting go of the past. It doesn't mean you necessarily have to like it, or but if you can find the spark of the creator in a person and know that it's there, you don't have to like what they do, but you can you can see them on the same common ground as you, and it helps you move on, and it helps you forgive what's hap what has happened, and so and it also helps bring you to the present, that present moment. So, it's it's really important to forgive. Here's that: accept the unacceptable and move on. Living in the past keeps us in the past. Um, that's one thing we cannot do. Meditate or pray. Going inside to connect with spirit, opening our hearts, our creativity, our passion, our understanding. Going inside is where you find all the answers. Going, in, going outside, you'll never find them. Go inside. And then change what you do daily. When you do the same thing over and over again, you get into that automatic mode. Um, Things don't ever change. So change things up. Do something new. I love to learn something new every day. Um, have new experiences. All of those things expand your energy. And they make life interesting. It's not boring then. And you learn so much more. Um, so changing something that you do every single day will open up and expand that energy. And then we go to um, living in the present. This is the only place we can create our lives. It's the only place we can make choices. It's the only place we can take action. So when we stay present and aware of everything that's going on, we have power. And we've got the power to create our lives. That's what consciousness is really about. And if you want to make an impact on the world, you need to stay conscious in everything you do in order to have that impact. So it's, it's huge to live in the present. And then again, what Kathy touched on earlier, loving yourself. Um, the one thing we know is that none of us are perfect. And when you go outside and you try and find anything that's exactly the same or that's perfect, everything is perfect just the way it is. And you learn and create your life by observing all these things. But if you walk outside and say, oh, this leaf is more important or more perfect than that leaf, you would drive yourself crazy. Everything that's part of the creator, to say, to say that the creator created everything and created all of us, and then to say that something's not perfect, everything is perfect. We just have to see it. So. It's like when we start appreciating that and appreciating that we're different, perfect is probably not the right word, 
when we see our differences and our diversity and the beauty that's in it, then we can really learn to love ourselves. And I love Grandmother Parisha will say, look at your fingerprint. You have your own unique fingerprint. It is yours. It is who you are. So don't try and be somebody else. Just be you. That's what you came in to do. And that leads us into find your why. You are unique. Live it. And I love Steve Jobs. Um, I still think he was an ET or something. He definitely had some kind of guidance coming in all the time. But he said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. So that was a quote from Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple. And he was, even though he grew a huge corporation, he was always the basis of an entrepreneur. Always. Right. Yeah. His creativity will probably go down in history like Einstein's theories um, and Tesla where these people were in touch with another, a higher aspect of themselves and weren't afraid to, they had the courage to bring it in and create with it way before their time. I mean, you think of the, the creations that, they're still, that are still coming out of Apple <laughs> that were created during his reign. Yeah. It may happen for generations, so. And, and I would put Tesla and Einstein in that as well. So the next thing we wanted to talk about is the conscious business idea that business is a force for good. And that's what we want to encourage you to think about is how your business, your conscious business that is based off of your experience, your morality, your values, your essence can be a force of good. And in my worldview, I see this as the fastest way to change the world because each leader, each business owner can affect at least 100 people. Whether it's 100 employees, it could only be five employees, but they've got at least 100 clients. So when you think about it, if you can get leaders to be conscious and know how to have your own conscious business, then it's, it's, it's very possible that this can multiply. So it's more than corporate social responsibility, it's a total commitment to a specific purpose beyond profit. So right now, 90% of conscious companies have a very low turnover, retaining over 90% of their workforce. Conscious leaders get double the effort from their employees and conscious companies outperform the S&P 500 by 14 times. So when you motivate your, your clients and your, and your um, employees to be, all work on the same project together with the same mission and passion, you get these kind of results. And one of the ways that this is manifested is through cause marketing. And cause marketing is a technique of marketing where um, Ben and Jerry actually started, were very famous doing it, where a portion of the proceeds from their ice cream sales went to a nonprofit. But the very first um, cause marketing project was done by American Express, where 25 cents of your American Express card purchase, this was in the 80s, um, 25, 25 cents of your, uh, your sign up for an American Express card went to refurbishing the Statue of Liberty. And they, they did really well. And then from then, it's, it's just multiplied. So cause marketing is where a portion, a percentage of your proceeds 
go towards a nonprofit. And that's one of the ways that you can create a conscious company. Then this, this, um, this item, the Stop, Breathe, and Think Mindfulness Challenge, this actually came out of a California university. And they did this on campus. So you're changing business and education now. So when people are coming through the system, it's not just people doing meditation or TM and doing some breathing exercises and they think they've got it. Now this is a concept that's infiltrating our whole culture where mindfulness, which means being mindful of yourself and others, it, it can be uh, used in multiple ways. And this um, concept came out of this May, June. So this is business to the rescue, this conscious company. The, a lot of this data came out of this one. And this was May, June, 2017. So these guys are right on the t tipping edge of what's happening right now. And it's so cool that, but, but there's leaders that are talking about this and figuring out how they can create teams inside their business and getting rid of the pyramid model that's all hierarchy and really hearing what their, their, their employees have to say because the employees have a lot of the answers, but they aren't heard. So this is a whole, it's a, such a cool trend. Um, so if to be a mindful business, you, it, it allows you to be resilient. And resilience is the new currency. When you think about being able to change on a dime, to be resilient, to be um, focused on a bigger goal than, than profit, the goal may be to, to stop using um, trees and use hemp for paper and save the rainforest. When you look at a bigger goal like that, you enlist the hearts and minds and wallets of, of so much of humanity. The people that want to leave the earth a better place for their for generations afterwards. Do you have anything to add for resilience, Trina? Well, what I was thinking was, you know, when we see the good and we see the heart based when there's disaster, when there's some kind of trauma, when there's something, you watch the people come out of the woodwork wanting to help. And it's a shame that that isn't the thought process every single day, that it takes a disaster to drive people to that point. And at the same time, it proves that inside, that's what everybody has, what everybody wants, that connection to be able to help people, to be able to serve people. And that's what I think business is starting to tap into now, is that we don't have to wait for a disaster. We don't have to wait for something terrible, even though many of us have been trained over generations to um, you know, respond when this happens or that happens or something. But again, that's a reaction. It's not the taking action. And that's where we're starting to shift is from the reaction, the reactionary mode, to the action taking mode. And you can see how people are responding by, um, you know, the GoFundMes and the, and the different um, crowdfunding that's there now, which never used to be in place. Um, People are willing to put their dollars into things that they feel um, are connecting, that they're feeling that it's making a difference. They just want to help. And so there's that goodness. There's that spark that's inside there. And it just takes a little bit to pull it out sometimes. And um, it's a shame that it's sometimes it just has to be tragedy. But in a lot of cases, um, now people are beginning to live their lives, and that's why heart-based businesses and conscious businesses are really beginning to thrive, because that energy is shifting. Right, right. And the mindfulness exercises allow you to get calm and make decisions from a calm space rather than be in a highly charged emotional place. And so your decisions 
or better decisions and last longer than things that you just do off the cuff. So the breathing, getting, being the observer, working from your heart, what, being aware of your feelings, and how, if this feels good, this doesn't feel good, checking in, that all of those items help you uh, help others in so many ways. And the schools are starting to teach that. Right. Um, the Westgate Academy over in Thornton, Colorado, um, my two granddaughters go there. They start the day with mindfulness and they trained the parents so that the parents knew what they were doing. But they start their day with mindfulness to get them present to learn. And this Happy Valley Preschool, where some of my grandkids went to um, preschool, taught the children belly breathing so that wow. they so that they could keep themselves more in control and they could calm themselves down and they just taught them belly breaths. And so you're starting to see it pop up in different places. People are seeing the benefits of becoming mindful and being present and how much more can be learned and how much more can be created. So it's pretty awesome. It's yeah. really building. So one of the things that, um, You'll find if you do some research out on consciousness and conscious business, you'll get huge number of, of responses if you look it up in Google. And that's because this trend is, is just blossoming. And I think it was um, Paul Hawkins did a small, a, a short blurb that's on YouTube where he started showing all these conscious businesses and uh, nonprofits that were showing. And it was like, it was done in the old Star Wars type um, print where it comes at you and goes 3D <laughs> depth of field in the background. And, and it just went on for miles and miles and miles because this trend is causing people to be aware and make better decisions. And then, go in groups together because in groups you're so much more powerful and you also can fit it into your schedule if you're a busy this adult you can do a little bit if you're in a group rather than having to do it all so what i did is i just came up with some uh resources that i recommend that i've um had a great experience with the first one is conscious business institute and uh, we will be sharing the link to this um, presentation so you can get these links later. Um, the Conscious Business Initiative is part of Humanities team. And um, when I did their marketing plan, I guess it was probably, I wanna say six or seven years ago, um, I saw this Conscious Business um, section in the shower <laughs> and put it in their plan and lo shower mail there it is it's so cool when that stuff happens but um anyway I, I highly recommend that process too what they're doing is remarkable this conscious company media this is the manufacturer of this periodical which you can get it at whole foods if they have it in stock or barnes and noble um, and you can get parts of it online. And then Cause Marketing Forum. Cause Marketing Forum is um, the, it's based out of Chicago and it is remarkable what, what large corporations and small are doing to work together to create cause marketing. And again, it's business for good. It's, it's how do you make business as a force of good? So, um, so those are some of the resources I recommend. Um, there's lots more out there. These were just ones I have experience with. So do you have anything to add there, Trina? Um, just, you know, some of the magazines that we talked about earlier yes. too, and that Yes Magazine I think is fabulous. Um, that's definitely one. Um, and even reading that book, Cultural Creatives, that was a, an eye-opening experience for me years ago. Um, it, it's, it's not really, an easy read, however. No. It's it's like this thick, and um, it's a lot of statistics, because he's a marketing 
guy, but but the philosophy of meeting people through their values and what they cherish most rather than their possessions is is really the way to go, I think. Mm -hmm. So definitely. Okay, so Trina. So um we just we can open it up for any questions or comments for people oh, too. Yeah. This this last um page really is it's just contact information for both of us. And um we so appreciate you joining us tonight with um you know and listening to some ideas and we'd love to hear some that you have as well or any feedback that you have. We have a little bit of time left. So I've been unmuted everyone except Henry. Henry, it's not letting me unmute you. So, or I'm unmuting you and you're muting yourself, Pat. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. Uh, I understand what you guys are talking about. I understand it in different terminology, but I think that you guys have the, the terminology and the, the thoughts and the, uh, uh, the way of approaching this that are probably much more in tune with with uh, the millennials and the, the folks that are like in the mainstream of uh, this kind of change in the world. And uh, that's, that's one thing that I became aware of. I feel kind of like outside the loop as far as knowing the terminology. I know the concepts, but uh, what this did is is in one way, it helped me to understand that I don't think I know how to speak the language, but the concepts I think are all there. And, uh, um, but I did want to make another, and the presentation was great, and I really appreciate you guys doing this. Um, a couple of things I wanted to comment about was, that were you aware that Steve Jobs read every single year from the, the uh, first year that he discovered it, Paramahansa, Paramahansa Yogananda's book, autobiography of a yogi. yogi yeah yeah that's pretty cool uh i actually only read it about a year or two ago and i don't know why i didn't read it it's kind of funny but finally did but i can see how that was very very motivational to him because mm -hmm. the, the amazing things that, that some of the people in the book were able to have accomplished the other thing is did you also hear about um, how um, singer developed the sewing machine mm -hmm he was laboring trying to find the idea he had the basic concept but he didn't understand how he was going to get the the needle to pass through the fabric and bring the thread out again and he went to sleep with that that problem on his mind and he woke up in the morning with a dream and in the dream he saw a series of soldiers on horseback all carrying spears and each spear had a hole in it and at one particular point from a, a particular um, it, as the soldiers passed this one place all of the uh, the lances or the or the not the swords um, spears were going up and down oh wow <laughs> that's cool yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's it's really good. cool yeah thank you so. for sharing that yeah. oh sure that's a cool story about uh, getting the solution to a, a problem in a dream and, it, and I and I love the thing about the shower thoughts. Yeah, yeah shower yeah. mail. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. That. I, that's been happening for me for a while, but yeah. uh, I, I really like to take my showers. <laughs> yeah, but then, then you have and, to get outside real quick and write it down. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, it depends on if it comes in a movie or just a uh -huh. quick blip. Right? Right. If it's right. a movie, it stays longer, but. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes it comes, it's like, ah, I can't bring paper in the shower. So I start repeating it, you know, or, and you it mean, happens at driving cars for me, too. When I'm driving, stuff really? drops in. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's it's, cool. That's, yeah, but that's kind of weird. Do weird they time make, to get something. Do they make waterproof uh, digital recorders? <laughs> I'm sure Probably. they do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's out there. <laughs> you guys thank you so much it gave me a lot to think about i am um, love the presentation and it was very timely and it makes it accessible for a person like me who feels more comfortable with when you did that chart with 
body, physical, and then company. I could see where I placed in there and I didn't feel quite so badly, which is there are some areas where I'm strong in, I'd be way more the visionary. And then there's the action oriented, uh, that's uh, the planning and the structure is a little harder. And I thought, well, that's okay. You, you just draw from your strengths and then you surround yourself with the right team. But you, you kind of got to know where you're coming from. So that really helped a lot. And then there's just the general practice that we have in our lives and how important that is to conscious living and that you can bring that into your company and then referencing it to the world outside and the millennials really brought that into a sharper view for me. And I wanted to share with you that a couple things is my brother and I were having a chat the other day. I want to share this link with him because I think it'll really motivate him. And he said to me, Jade, you and I, you know, are smarter than hell in these theories and ideas and what's going on in the world. And we're so aware of it. And he goes, and how are we doing in our lives? And we laughed. And I was listening to uh, Singularity One FM. It's, I recommend it highly. It's created by a Russian scientist, philosopher, futurist. Uh, he's an author. He's a speaker. He's everywhere if you Google him. And they were talking about a test that the military was doing at one time to um, grade intelligence. And what they discovered, since it wasn't registering exactly correctly across the board, is that, that people high in intelligence would rate well, but people high in creativity and people who could visualize and see problems and address them, uh, the different ways that the mind works, which, which was the discussion, were not grading high on this intelligence test. So they hmm. changed it. The military was smart yeah. and they changed it. And I guess if you could take that into a, and what made me laugh is he said, people who rated well in problem solving in this way that the test didn't grab, didn't always do well financially in life. Uh -huh. And I could see my brother and I, <laughs> I mean, I've done, you know, I have been successful at times and, and had good, um, business success, but it was always when I was the visionary and I was running the show. Uh, in a team effort, I would have to do all of the other things which we were discussing, which is like working as a team and how do you process and communicate um, in that culture. So it was really, really helpful. And I like to think that uh, the demographic that you shared about interests versus what was the other one uh, oh, so demographics usually was by your possessions what right. kind of car you drove whether you had a house 2.2 right. children and right. then the cultural creatives method that came in probably 12 years ago maybe 15 years ago mm -hmm. um it started addressing interests right and that really is the larger bubble uh, you walk into, I can actually walk into a building and if I have a meeting or an, anything with a business person or an interview or something, I can tell very quickly what side of that, that energy they sit on. And I've always been able to in, inject in that communication from the way that I feel is important. And then they get more of a 5D reality about what I'm speaking about and who I am. And I'm really happy because the way we're moving in the world is it is it is that hard energy of who we are, not uh, and what we can bring to the table in that diversity rather than the top down, which always felt very constricting to me, and I was never able to flow. So it just really brought up a lot when I was doing this. So thank you. Great, thank you. Yeah. Henry, do you want to speak? I know he had a... I think he uh, can unmute himself. I, yeah, I tried to unmute. There he is. Hi, Henry. So here I am. I'm still a little under the weather, but the, I was somewhat taking in um, the ideas and also uh, the healing energy. 
<laughs> Good. Uh, so, there was that too. <laughs> yeah, but, which is important because that's why that's what heart centered business is about. Mm -hmm. It's about healing and wholeness of the mm -hmm. customer and the business person or the team. Yep. Uh, yep. It, it's moving towards the wholeness. Perfect. So, so, so I thank you as well. It's, um, so it's kind of taking it on different levels. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you for coming. Thanks, you all. And uh, Trina, is there anything else you'd like to share before we've got three more minutes before nine o'clock? Three more minutes before up. nine, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, that it's like I have this diverse background between business and um the spirituality and i've been trained well on both sides and used to play used to say oh this one's my clark kent life and this one's my superman life and have really found that um i can't keep them separate anymore and i'm seeing that out in the world that it's not separate and um, a lot of people are pulling both these pieces together and um coming from a heart base and really expanding um, and, and helping people understand the importance of their business and the importance of their contribution is critical for everybody to bring forward right now. And that piece about the beauty and diversity and that each person holds a puzzle piece and the puzzle isn't complete unless, until every piece is brought forward. Um, it takes away that whole hierarchy that that's there because we can't do it without everybody. And it's a shame when you see some of these people that are really, really struggling yet there's a place that some of them have made a choice in their life somewhere on some level to be in that place, either to learn their lessons or to share with us a different side that we don't understand or we haven't experienced. So it's like taking that in and wholeness, as Henry was saying, it becomes wholeness. And, um, and it's like, that's one of the reasons why Kathy and I are, are sharing some of these things because it's like, we're both seeing this and, and we do see the importance of getting everybody in playing and to create it, the world. I would yeah. like to say too that we want to help people have courage to really show up because it's still a little scary to uh, admit your strengths. And um, for instance, I just did a video where where I admitted I was psychic and intuitive, and I looked at it and went, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and I, I've done it once or twice on a radio show, and I don't know if anyone heard it, so mm. I was like. Okay, I did it, but but I'm not sure. But then I I did a video inside my office and published it and sent it out to my list. And and part you know part of it is like hearing a relative go, "You didn't do that, did you?" You know, you could hear the naysayer that stinking thinking that comes around. But then at a certain point, it's like, no, I just can't hide it anymore. If they don't mm -hmm. if they don't accept that part of me, then and and the more i claim it the better i get at it the more the more i accept that part of me and embrace it the more i get up get to help people with it so so that's been a huge lesson so and and i, I do have a corporate background before i started this business i ran a division of arthur anderson where i had 80 people below me I ran a division called the Change Enablement Group. And you just never knew who was going to stab you in the back. Your people. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. I just, I was so lucky to get out of it. Um, because, and it, the, it isn't just Arthur Anderson, it's lots of places that, um, you know, people just aren't in their heart. They're not kind. They're not doing the golden rule. They're in a competitive, it, they, especially women against women. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, um, it's time to shift all of that because everyone that's here is a gift. 
And you can learn from every single person. If you really take the time to talk to them, that's one thing, Greg, you're, Gregory, you're really good at. You really know how to connect with people and ask some questions to really find out who they are. And um, not, you know, it's time for that. It's time mm -hmm. to make time for that. Let's put it that way, my opinion. I wanted to say something that uh, is right in line with, with what you guys are doing. Something that has been really helpful for me. I heard a, uh, a YouTube video <coughs> in which the, uh, the speaker was talking about how we all, those of us who have this, this you know, alternative kind of thinking that want to make a difference in the world, that want to help, that, that want to see the world succeed in, in, uh, in love and compassion, how the reason that we have had such a hard time, some of us, <laughs> <laughs> coming out, yeah, me especially. Okay, I know, and, I, someday yeah. I'll get you out there. I know I will. Right. I mean, coming out and really starting to do the work that we came to do and, and offering, you know, these, these alternatives that we've been given is because we spent so many lives trying to do that. But we were the, we were the weird, you know, shaman person at the edge of the village. And they only, <laughs> they only came to see us when they needed something, but we were just a little bit too weird. And so they left us alone otherwise. And then in other times, they burned us, they killed us, they, they <laughs> threw us off a cliff or whatever. And after many, many, many lifetimes of doing that, our hearts sank and we just felt like, how can I do this again? It became a conditioned response to go and hide and stay, mm -hmm. stay closed down. And it, it has taken an act of will to face the fears and say, you know, I'm, I'm ready to do this now. And one thing that was being said was that the tide has actually turned and light is winning out now. And so it's not going to be the way that it was before where they're going to, they're going to kill us. But people now want what we have to offer. And they don't even just want what we have to offer. They want who, the energy of who we are right. in life. And when I heard that, that made such a large, large difference. And I had to examine what the heck have I, I've been doing. And, and ever since I've known you, Kathy, you've been saying, come on, come on out and play. I love let's, you because I can see it. what you can do. And, right. and I want you to do it. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but she does that to me, too. Yeah, I did. Right. Want to hand it well, I, I hear that. That's your message with everybody. And I no, do appreciate No, it isn't. I it know, isn't? It isn't. No, I don't. No. Uh -uh. Okay. No, the, the thing is, is that I feel that we all stood in line to get these bodies to be here at exactly <laughs> this time. Right. And we came here to be the first wave of truth sayers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that what's happened is the truth is going to be revealed and the, the church and some of the other institutions that were the truth sayers are that all of that disclosure is going to change people's relationship with them and they're going to be looking for new guides new teachers and there aren't enough of us because we all were afraid we were going to be burned to the stake again mm -hmm. but but we have so much more support and we're creator gods i mean the power that you have after all those those lifetimes and those timelines of being a, a wizard i'm just gonna say <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh man well Gregory come on so I mean they can't touch you they can't touch you this time so oh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, I've had I mean, a couple of people this. come after me and uh, well, and, well and the thing is, so well. is that you enlist you know that you're able to call upon the ancestors uh -huh. or your timeline uh -huh. or your higher uh, the veil is thinner than it's probably ever been in the history of mankind. I don't know what it was like when Atlantis was here, or the Sumerian and the, um, the, pre, the pre civilizations, but the star beings. But since our cycle, this is, this is showtime. Your thoughts you can create and manifest just like that. 
and but you have to trust you know and that's where you the being in group like this where we support each other and hold each other up and nurture each other that's the only missing piece is it, it you know come out and play it's safe now <laughs> right 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 so <clears throat> So this is Henry. Um, I just wanted to express, and I had to step away from <clears throat> from what was happening, so it may have been shared. But I feel right at this moment in this sharing, kind of I feel, perceive, and see everybody's passion. And I think the passion is kind of the key point. You know, it connects with, with our deep inner longing. It connects with who we are and and our reason for being here. So. So everything, when we're expressing or sharing, if we can stay connected with that in our passion, our passion is who we are. Our passion is our individual expression of love and light. So, so I just wanted to share that. Um, Perfect. And passion is also a sound in this case. What is the sound? Well, see, Henry is a sound wizard, ah. but it really more an angel, sound angel. Yeah, you can't see that. him right now, but but anyway, he. Well, you you met him, um, Jade, at uh -huh. CCC. He played the crystal balls. Oh yeah, everything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So, so but but passion and emotion rather than being a, a scary thing or let's not show our emotion. Now it's like connect with people with it. And that's a key suggestion for people who are doing TED Talks. Yep. Coming from, from that place mm -hmm. and, you know, to be conversational, but, but to always remain connected with that passion of what, what draws us, what motivates us. Right. And, and it, connected with the depths of who we are, uh, so. Mm. Thank you, Henry. Thank Bra you so yeah, much. Brilliant as usual. <laughs> We're so lucky. Thank you guys for showing up. Really appreciate you playing with us and hope that uh, more and more you're expanded and that we can support you on your journey. And, uh, and make it easier for you to be, to really show up completely as with your gifts. And we're doing this every month, just yes. because we can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to say that you're putting a lot of waves out, you know, regardless of how many people show up on the uh, webinar platform. Um, and if you guys give me permission, I'll share this link. Um, with some friends. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. Who can really sure. appreciate it. Um, because you're, you put it together so well, you're a really good tag team. And you know, there was something you said about the millennials. Um, and what came to mind is that they are uh, meaning making machines. Mm. And that's who we are. We're meaning making machines. You know, we, mm -hmm. we, and, and I, I love it and I feel like um, if I could, if with your permission, like I said, I could share this link. Oh, sure. Have you had a lot of people come in this pla in this platform? Uh, the most we've had is 30. Wow. So, um, cool. but, but uh, we're still experimenting. Um, some of the courses that have had the best turnout have been training actual training how to do something yeah. and where people got hard skills this yeah. is this was more um passion a passion dance yeah. here um and but the, this conversation could be said six times a year yeah and yeah. it would still it, it you couldn't say it enough really mm -hmm. so but but i don't know the millennials it's so interesting um so many of them are so, I, I was in, when I was in Arthur Anderson, so this was a while ago, um, there was a international company that is an architect firm that builds 
build schools and, and other industries all around the world. And they were, they hire the brightest and the best out of school. And they were hiring architects and um, designers and engineers. Mm -hmm. And this guy was speaking at a thing down in Denver and he, he was one of the heads or the owner of this organization. So it was a big mucky muck thing. And he said, he, the first time he had ever experienced this was he offered a really high paying job to a college graduate. So this kid's right out of school. He's get, being offered like $60,000 a year for not an after degree, a regular uh, college degree. And the kid looks at him and says, I'm interested, but can my friend come too? Oh. And do you think about that? What that, that lesson is, mm -hmm. it's quite remarkable that this kid would take a chance to not get the job. Mm. That he wasn't selfish. He wanted that his relationship with his peers was important enough to, to take a chance to not get the job that's that's remarkable i think yes but that's what you're seeing you're seeing a relationship to other people you know people criticize about the um technology and how it's not creating relationships in some ways they're they're more connected they may not be talking face to face the same way we did but they're they're very connected with their friends, very solid relationships. You know, there was one area um, when you were talking about critical awareness, there was a lot um, of fires going off in my neural synapses throughout this, but I wondered, um, there could be training just on that one, one area. It's mm -hmm. very big. And I just went through something today prior to getting on this webinar and I thought, ah, critical awareness. So I was processing in a lot of ways that you were talking about in this. Mm. Uh, and I had a wonderful friend who was mirroring, we were mirroring to each other. And I felt like I got a lot worked out just by having her as a mirror. But I wondered, how do we move out of projection and into critical awareness? And I assume it's just dipping into the heart, but I just don't know fully what my capabilities are. I only know what I know. Do you know what I mean? Like to me, something feels right or I'm speaking. And it's really hard to talk with others and be with others um, when you might have difference of opinion and to know that you're really actually discerning it correctly. Um, so that's a whole area I'd be real open to learning more in, in a group setting because I can listen and learn far more than when I'm talking <laughs> and to gain from other people's experiences. That's awesome. Thank you for that suggestion. Yeah, that's a great idea. So there, there's so many courses like nonverbal, um, uh, what is it? Nonviolent communication. Oh, there's yeah, so many that. things. And, and actually, so much of this is a mindfulness practice where you don't come already with a judgment. You're totally open. Mm -hmm. And so that way it doesn't affect you the same way it would as if you came in with your own agenda. Mm -hmm. And then when you, when you get to see the other person's able and feels um, heard and and appreciated for their choice, mm -hmm. there's no conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, it really, it really gives you a chance to see with the observer mind mm. and maybe meet them part way. Yeah. yeah, a lot of it, so much too is, is saying like, like, there is no mm -hmm. right and there is no wrong. Mm -hmm. There's just a, it, it, there's just a, an agreement. Um, and, and so if you can work from that premise, there's just so many different ways to come at it, but it's retraining. Like you said, it's retraining the mind to think a different way than what we were programmed to think in the beginning. And, you know, it, it's kind of a conflict when you think, okay, it's either positive or negative. 
is how energy is. And at the same time, to be able to say there's no right and there's no wrong. Right. <laughs> you know, but it, but a lot of it is just perceptions and getting some of these co concepts in that, you know, when you're reading yourself, you're reading the energy. Right. When you're working with other people, there can't be a right and a wrong. There has to be a, um, you know, if you're trying to resolve something, right. there's, there's cultural things that groups have decided is, are proper behaviors or not proper behaviors. Um, but all of it is all decision and it's all choice. Mm. And if we were brought up, I always go back to looking at being a baby thinking, okay, now if I was trained this way, um, I would be looking at the world in a completely different way. Or if I was brought up in this culture, I'd be looking at the world in a completely different way, which tells me that everything is learned behavior like that. So any learned behavior can be reversed and worked with in my world. But that would be a fun class to put put some stuff together with that. Right. Well, right. we're living in so many realms. Like when you went off to your adventure in Sedona that you were sharing with us, um, what I notice about these waves and transitions is, and you brought up earlier just in relationship to this, is the difference between process, 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 and then flipping it. And um, it's very it's in such a state of flux at different levels of my being that I want to honor that. So, so say you have some sort of perceived uh, problem and you have to find a solution. doesn't matter what that is, positive, negative, whatever it is. When the energy comes up, I still think part of me still says, well, you have to become aware of it. And so that, you know, it's like that saying, I think David White said it. You have to see things for the energy they hold. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was articulating this to a friend in a better way than I am now because we were in the grips of it. And then, but I also know that by verbalizing it to her, verbalizing it with her, it was almost like then I realized when you offer this out, it can immediately flip. You never have to always do that work with a mirror or with an, with another, you just do it. And then if there's no expectation that they do anything, you, you can heal it right here, right by yourself. But I wonder how quickly that's happening for people in business sense, in communication with loved ones. So I want to just be able to flip it, but I, but there has to be that, merging of recognition at the same time are you experiencing mm -hmm. that sometimes yeah for sure because um you know and i even go to a place of like how much if if the cells can carry some of this energy or can carry memories can, and we talk about cellular memory um, how many generations of different things have we carried just through the birth process that show up that we don't even know where it came from? So, you know, there's this thing about saying, okay, we don't want to live in the past. I think the trick is to recognize when something triggers or fires and be that observer and say, where's this coming from and how do I deal with it? And do I want to continue? But the more that you recognize it, the more that, you deal with it the more you begin to change it and as we change it i believe we change the past as you know the different things that are there because it's all in relation and if time is only relative and, and right now in the 3d we have the timeline but when we step out into the out into the void or we step out of this dimension and everything is impacting you know as it is it's it's just a, there's just so many interesting concepts around it, you know, to play with. And um, that's, I don't, I'm getting myself more and more into a place that I just want to play in it. And I want to see what the impacts are if I do it this way or the impacts are if I do it this way. But always coming back to that present moment in 3D where I make my choices. And, um, you know, I have my relationships and I take the action and working on catching myself when I have a reaction to something and saying, oh, where did that one come from? You know, and, yeah. and recognizing it for what it is and 
sometimes you see patterns, sometimes you don't, but there's so much that's there. We are just, I mean, as human beings, we are amazing. <laughs> we are so crazy amazing what we're capable of doing. And we create, whether we're aware of it or not, we're always creating. Every single day we're creating. So it's, it's like, it would be so much cooler to be aware of everything I'm creating instead of just unconsciously walking around well, doing it. No, well, I, there was one thing that went out for your book club that was Dr. Joe Dispenza uh -huh. and it's a mind movie. And I've watched it a whole bunch of times. I really like it. But one of the things it said was the energy that made the body can heal the body. Yeah. The energy that made this can heal, can shift this. So when you get into that mentality where you can create from that actual pattern, brain pattern, watch out, watch out. I mean, there's no reason for there to be victims. There's no reason for any of this. Um, if the learning path is we've already learned it enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's get the switch to that one. <laughs> Yep. But, but Jade, I think what you were talking about, were you processing with a friend? I think part of this is safe space. You know, yeah. when you're in a, in a place where you're, you're able to think, you're breathing, you're not in fear at all. And you've been given a safe space to process. I mean, I process that way too. I like to speak it out yes. and then I get it kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sometimes, a lot of times, especially if it's really charged. Yeah. Because you know, I, I, it's not that I want to be right. No. I want to figure out a better way. Right. Because I don't want to respond out of the emotion. Right. You know, I, I don't know how those people that just blurt out and do that and they, oh, I feel better now. Well, you just blew off all the people in the room. <laughs> you feel better, but they'll never talk to you again. They're gonna hide when you walk around. You walk around the corner. <laughs> you know. So I, I don't know. Golden rule. Yeah. Um, Kathy, what was the name of that movie that Joe Dispenza? But what is it? It also I can send you the link to it. Yeah, it's a yeah. it's a little yeah. mind movie. Yeah. And it's uh, it's wonderful. It's just okay. uh, it's probably five minutes long. Okay. And it's just a bunch of different affirmations like that. But but it ba basically it's retraining your brain to to know that you're a creator. Um, I also would reference my avatar work that I did thirteen what uh thirteen years ago. That was all about this as well. Wow. It where where it's really about you see yourself as um and a Abraham's work would tell you the same thing. It's you know, like attracts like. If you're creating fear, you're gonna get more fear. If you're creating love, you're gonna get more love. We just and we have a choice. That's what the consciousness piece is, is choosing better. And giving yourself a platform and give yourself tools so you can make those different choices. And I don't think those choices were were given to us growing up. They are now. They're now. I mean, the TMers and the, all of that work that's in schools, it, it, it's a better way. It's a much better way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you like Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's got a new book out that's called Becoming Supernatural. Oh, wow. And, and what he's doing is taking um, all of his research. He, he had kind of a mind shift in that. He said, I was always worried about the critics and what they would say and trying to make sure that my work is validated and things. And they've been having so many experiences of um, really – having these amazing um what does he call them you know th these amazing states that they're moving into that he finally just said i need to write to the people that are interested in this so he's putting out all of the results of all of his work with the brain studies with the meditations he's doing with heart math um the experiences that they're having and um, the book's actually very good. It's got meditations at the end of many of the 
um, the ones that he's using in, in his advanced trainings to open up the um, open up the chakras more, open up um, all the energy in the body, help create um, changes in the brain and things. And, and uh, he's kind of pulling out the stops with this one. Yeah. What's that which, called? It's becoming supernatural. Ah, okay. Yeah. I love it. Which we already are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Acknowledging that you are. <laughs> and, uh, Absolutely. and you don't have to ride a broom. And you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, everyone, if, if people knew their divine capabilities, what a different world we'd be living in. Yeah. And we're actually doing a book study on that, a book club um, on Law of Attraction Radio. Um, and it airs on Sunday nights. Um, oh. But you can, you can actually go to Law of Attraction Radio and find it. Um, Grandmother's the one was hosting it. But we're on like chapter, chapter three of the book, but everything is archived. Um, so you can pull up the different ones and... Um, I'm one of the co-hosts on that, so um, it's a weekly, okay. and I send out information on it every week too. So, okay. um, but okay. it's will include me, Trina. I'm starting to realize that um, coaching and community, which I always thought I had to find physically, can also be found online, mm -hmm. and that I do really well in a, you know, in this kind of environment, and I never wanted to reach out for it too much before. Um, and, and just when I do, I just feel really nourished in a whole different way. Good. 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 Yeah. Good. Great. Trina. Yes. You, you mentioned the connected universe. It's a movie. Uh-huh. And, and uh, where do you find that? Um, right. He's great. Think, did we get that on Amazon or I don't think it was on Netflix. I think we had to no, it's go on through Amazon Prime. I think we had to go on Amazon, yeah, to get that. Yeah, then, the Amazon Prime video service. Yeah, and then we had, when we were in Sedona, we actually watched it. Wow. And um, and then uh, Tony, grandmother's um, husband, went down into town, and he came back, and he said, you're not going to believe this, what happened. <laughs> he met, he met the one of the 12 who was the 12 partners of Nassim when he first started doing this, he met the guy and then she is the one of the 12. It was his girlfriend and she's written a book that's called the technology of God. And she, it came out in 2011, but wasn't really noticed and now it's getting noticed but he, she, one of the characters is based on Nassim. All of his work is in it. It's an action thriller, kind of like a Dan Brown novel. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. But he took all of Nassim's ideas and concepts and put it into this book. But she came up and talked to us about Nassim's work and, and said the one thing in the movie, The Connected Universe, that was missing was really the point that he believes that there's two that there's these complementaries and yeah, and actually in the book it describes it really well, but he focuses on that um, picture in physics with the man when they try and explain the universe expanding and they glue pennies on a balloon and the man blows the balloon up and it expands. Well, Nassim always says, who's the man? <laughs> so he says, something has to be contracting in order for something to be expanding. Mm -hmm. So what is this flip side? And he puts it together and it actually looks like two toruses on top of each other. And when you look down at it, it looks like the yin yang symbol. And I mean, it's really amazing the way, and, and one of the concepts that he's come up with is the fact that he believes that sacred geometries are what, are the boundaries that hold physical matter in its form. Yep. And that especially the tetrahedron yep. and the 64 points yep. that you find like in the flower of life and stuff. But he said he's really working on these ideas and concepts that the that these sacred geometries are what is holding 
the pieces of matter together to create, you know, the little particles to create matter and help hold the form. And um, some of the mathematics are kind of supporting it, even though people want to poo-poo it. So he talks a little bit about it in the connected universe. She goes into some of it in the book, quite a bit of it in the book, because I had to reread some parts in order to let them sink in. But it's actually a very good story. And um, and her name was Alea Anaton. So What's it's a last name. What's Miss hmm? last name? Harmin. Harmin. And it, he's. He's got some amazing, I mean, there's a lot of people that are, you know, trying to say, oh, he has no credentials, he can't make it. That means he's really pushing buttons. So I just keep saying, go for it, you know. <laughs> he's rocking physics a little bit. Yeah. Well, he's like Einstein, right? Yeah. She said he's gotten a little snobby. Aww. With his, with you know, like the importance when you when you start yeah. becoming important and stuff. But he's still doing. And then when Jamie, I, I think she she said Jamie Janover, who um, he was just in town. He's like an ambassador. She used to yeah. teach a lot of the same stuff. Jamie's one of the only ones that is still out there actively teaching. Um, but she's probably going to be going back out herself and um, bringing more of it out too so her name's spelled a-l-e-y-a and then a-n-n-a-t-o-n and and uh, Nassim Harriman has a device that uh, is a pendant that yes. Barbara Marks Hubbard was given at her birthday her 88th birthday party and it looks like a little um, I got pictures on my phone um, it looks like a little flying saucer <laughs> <laughs> and it apparently structures water, and oh. so you wear it to structure the water in your body. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I've been looking into um, Aragon, uh, how do you pronounce it? Um, Aragon Energy. Um, Ar 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 Argon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Argon. Um, Argon. Yeah. And um, a lot of these same um, Tachyon scalar wave um, devices that deal with radiation, chemtrails, and EMFs. And you guys, this stuff is easy to make. It's log It's easy to understand. And, and of course, they're making these incredible technologies now where you can wear some of this around your neck so that when you're traveling or just out in the world, yes, that's it right there in the pyramid size. And what's yeah. that one do, Kathy? It's, it's organized. It, it's yeah. for EMFs. I've got it right yeah. by my router. Right. I, the, this one actually, I took a class down in Denver. It yeah. really was made in a glass. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh. and I, yeah, they're neat, huh? But it's got gold and all sorts yeah, of And the Tesla coil and all that. Yeah. Well, it's yeah really, I really liked it. I really like mm -hmm. working right. I, can, I know, so do I. Well, I just learned about it, but I, you know, the crazy thing is, is this geometry that Nassim is talking about and they're giving to us in science has to be brought forward in that platform so that people will find it viable. But I'm an energetic being and things just work when they work and you can tell why they work. And, um, and, and, and so there's that platform of it and then there's what is the result. And that instrument you have in your office is a result of it. We can make it. It's not expensive. The other thing which I really think, uh, you know, I'm doing a humanitarian project on it, um, just in terms of a business plan, but is plasma water, fourth stage water, and it can heal. So, um, you know, I came on this, hopped on this because I saw it today, but also because it's, how do you develop the visions? What does it mean? I'm really more of a connector than a business person. I like to connect commu communities and people and resources and things. Um, and so as a result, I find I'm drawn to books and radio shows and online Google searches that resonate with a lot of what this geometry and these new technologies are bringing forth. It's all over TED. It's, it's out there. The problem is it's not readily accessible for people out here living and they and the government won't approve these things so they always have to stay in statuses of proof but not of use 
So it's really about awareness, people talking about it, that these things come out. Yeah. Right. Anyway, that's my latest. Choices. <laughs> what is choices? Choices, yes. Right, right. Conscious. So, so I think we got to wrap up. It's uh, 9.30. Yes. So we're going to stop. But thank you so much, you guys. For yeah, coming. I appreciate thank you guys you. coming on and all your comments. Yes, awesome. thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank you. so much. Nice to, yeah. nice, to was, nice to meet you, Greg. Take care. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, nice to meet you, Gregory. It was nice to be together tonight. Thank you. Yeah, guys. Uh, we got to play more. Jane. Nice to meet you, too. Okay, now send me uh, the Sunday night info, and I'll join up. Okay. Thanks, okay. I will do that. Okay. Bye, everybody. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.